Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we'll continue our discussion with the subject of physics of semiconductor devices. And in the previous two videos, we discussed uh, about uh, basic concepts related to semiconductors and various ways of classifying them into different categories and also about the uh, atomic structure of semiconductors, particularly silicon. So there we discussed uh, about uh, energy levels in semiconductor associated with each uh, orbital path and also about the various energy bands present. So in this video we are going to take that uh, discussion a little bit forward and we will go a little bit deep into the energy band theory concept. So the topic of this video as you can see is the energy band theory. Okay. So we uh, discussed as per the Bohr's atomic model that uh, an atom it consists of a positively charged the central part of the atom which is a positively charged nucleus around which electrons revolve around in fixed designated orbits at specific radius distance away from the nucleus and each orbit has a certain amount of energy associated with it the electrons revolving in a particular orbit have certain fixed energy associated with it. Now, the energy level or the energy associated with an isolated atom, okay? An isolated atom is, we are considering only that atom disregarding any interaction uh, with the neighboring atoms, okay? No uh, interaction with uh, other surrounding or neighboring atoms just one atom itself so for an isolated atom the electrons they have distinct energy levels the electrons revolving in various designated fixed orbits they will have distinct discrete energy levels so in order to understand this video i recommend you to please watch the previous two videos first and then come to this video okay about uh, the atomic structure and the semiconductor classification okay so the energy associated with uh, uh, for an electron in the isolated let's say hydrogen atom as per the Bose atomic model it can be represented by this expression which is given by m subscript o q4 by 8 epsilon 0 h square n square m0 q4 and epsilon 0 square h square they're all constants their values m0 is the electron mass okay free electron mass for the isolated atom q is the electronic charge epsilon subscript o is the absolute permittivity or permittivity of free space h is Planck's constant and n is the uh, orbit number which orbit it is okay starting from the inner orbit to the outer valence orbit so all of these are constant es uh, expect this uh, except uh, this n square the uh, which is also called as the principal quantum number so it gives us this value minus 13.6 n square electron volt okay so it is all minus now, this is the energy for the hydrogen atom and here this term isolated is very important. It means it is under the, it is not under the influence or uh, with interaction with the electric field or uh, with any neighboring atoms, okay. For the ground state, okay, the innermost orbit the discrete energy as we can see if we replace n with 1 we'll get minus 13.6 electron volt for the first excited state if we replace n with 2 it will be minus 13.6 divided by 4 which will be minus 3.4 electron volt okay but for higher values of n the energy levels they split why this happens 
this is because of the interaction with the other surrounding atoms why it happens we'll discuss so it happens as per the azimuthal or angular quantum numbers and uh, they are also the concept of s p d and f subshells they come into play which we have studied in chemistry in our college days so if we consider two identical atoms okay two identical atoms same atoms separated by a large distance okay large distance they have no interaction with each other it means we can consider two isolated identical atoms so the energy levels for these atoms will be same for any principal quantum number as per this relation okay they are isolated they are separated by a large distance so their energy level will be the same for any value of the orbit the orbit number so this same energy level of two identical isolated atoms is called as doubly degenerate level now when these two atoms are brought close together okay the interatomic distance it starts to reduce we reduce that distance what happens is the doubly degenerate level it splits into two separate energy levels it is because of the interaction between two atoms okay so we can try to understand this with the help of this diagram this is the fixed constant energy level for two identical isolated atoms they have the same energy as per this relationship okay the electron energy for two identical isolated atoms for a particular quantum number n it is same the up to this point okay up to this point the two atoms are separated by a large distance it means they are isolated when they are brought close together and beyond a certain interatomic distance the interaction between the two atoms basically it is attraction or repulsion this causes splitting of this same or fixed constant energy level which is called as the doubly degenerate energy level this constant energy level it splits into two separate energy levels this happens when the distance between the two atoms it starts decreasing and this splitting it becomes prominent at the equilibrium interatomic distance which is in the order of angstroms okay it is in the order of angstroms generally now this is the phenomena that happens now if we consider n isolated identical atoms n different atoms we consider which are far away from each other so for these n isolated identical atoms the energy level isolated okay far away from each other their energy levels will be the same for any given quantum number as per this relationship okay for n separate atoms far away from each other no interaction their energy level will be constant so when they are brought close together the interatomic distance between them starts reducing they will also split into n closely spaced energy levels so when two atoms are brought close together they split into two energy levels when n atoms are brought close together they split into n separate closely means close uh, the energy difference is small energy levels when their interatomic distance gets reduced they are brought close together so basically it happens because of attraction or repulsion between atoms so here when the interatomic distance starts reducing the splitting becomes more prominent and splits into n separate energy levels which are which have the difference between them is small so here a is the equilibrium interatomic distance okay
and generally it is in the order of angstroms now our particular interest is for the silicon atom with atomic number 14 the electronic configuration as per the sp d and f subshell as per the uh, principal and the azimuthal or angular momentum quantum number is given by this 1s2 2s2 2p6 this is for the first and second orbit the innermost and the middle orbit our interest is here 3s2 3p2 the valence orbit or the outer orbit electrons 3s2 3p2 s and p subshell for the uh, outermost orbit n equals to 3 so when n atoms of silicon identical atoms of course all atoms are of silicon so they are identical so when they are brought close together first they were separate far away from each other their energy level will be constant so when n atoms of silicon are brought close together the interatomic distance starts reducing the 3s and 3p subshells the outermost okay electrons the valence orbit the 3s and 3p subshells they interact with each other they overlap because of forces of attraction and repulsion the interaction happens they interact they overlap and then they split around the in equilibrium interatomic distance same way here as it happened here and here this is for two atoms this is for n atoms same thing happens and this gives rise to this kind of a energy band diagram so here the 3s and 3p electrons they first interact and overlap at around this point beyond this they were at constant energy levels the electron energy this is the energy of the electron for the s subshell the 3s subshell and this is for the 3p subshell when they are brought close together first they overlapped or overlapped with each other and then they split because of forces of attraction and repulsion to form two separate energy bands one is the conduction band, one is the valence band. And the separation between them, the lower portion of this first band and the upper portion of this second band, the difference between them in terms of energy, electron volt, is given as the forbidden energy gap. So same principle, that's why I explained to you this and this energy band diagram first then we went to silicon so here the outermost four electrons in the s and p subshell 3s2 and 3p2 this they when they are brought close together when n atoms of silicon are brought close together they overlap they interacted overlapped with each other then they split into two separate energy bands at the equilibrium interatomic distance which is about 5.43 angstrom so before that when they are separate far away from each other they had fixed constant energy levels for the s subshell electron and p subshell electron then when they are brought close together the first they interacted and overlapped with each other then they split forming two energy bands valence band and conduction band and the difference between the lower portion of the conduction band and the upper portion of the valence band is the forbidden energy gap which we discussed in the previous video which was within one electron volt for semi, uh, semiconductors 1.1 electron volt for silicon 0 0.7 electron volt for germanium okay so this uh, is all about the energy band theory which is discussed in a little bit detail going into the whole uh, uh, the atomic uh, you know isolated atoms then bringing together interaction overlap all of that so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much